big changes are happening in Canada's economy and they're directly affecting the real estate market. Today, we'll break down the latest stats for October, what the market looks like so far for November here in Calgary, immigration, interest rates. It's a jam-packed video. So if you are wondering what this all means for buyers and sellers and the market in general, stay tuned. Welcome back, I'm Dawn. We're going to get straight into it today because we've got a lot to cover. First, let's talk about Calgary's October numbers. Sales were actually higher than September at 2,174 homes sold and just slightly higher than October. And I'm talking about a handful of homes higher, pretty much the same. Inventory is up 55% from last year to 4,966 homes available, but it's actually down from last month by 98 homes. The inventory increase is driven mainly by new listings in the higher price ranges. New listings in October were 3,264 homes, which is up 21.6% from last year, but again, down by 423 listings from last month. Now, as we get closer to Christmas, it's not uncommon to see less listings. In October, 67% of homes listed sold, which is actually more than last month by 13%. Months of supply. So how many months it would take to sell all of the homes on the market if no new listings came on at our current current pace of sales. Overall, was looking like we were inching towards a balanced market last month at 2.53 months. For October, it's down 2.28 months. Now, as we discussed last month, that number was slightly skewed because a lot of the inventory coming on was in higher price ranges and the market is still pretty competitive at the entry level prices for each segment. So inventory levels are finally starting to reach more typical, typical levels, but there is a big shift. Almost half of all listings now are priced over 600,000. Speaking of price, for October, the total residential benchmark price was 592,500, up 4.5% from last year and down about 4,400 from last month. Here's the breakdown by segment. You'll notice all property types are up over last year and down month over month. Last year at this time, they were up month over month, right up until December, where we saw each segment except condos take a slight dip. Now, the number we've been watching month over month is the sales to list price ratio. And in September, 39% of homes were selling at or over list price. In October, only 31% of homes were selling at or over list price. Now compare that to last year at this time where 48% of homes were selling at or over list price. We're definitely seeing a shift in the market and buyers decision making. You know, it gives them more choices. So when we're trying to predict what the market is going to do in 2025, there are a few other key indicators we need to look out for. One of the big stories affecting the market, Canada's recent decision to reduce immigration targets significantly. We didn't get the balance quite right. Up until now, high immigration levels were key to Canada's economic growth strategy, even helping to skirt a potential recession by boosting labor force numbers and consumer spending. However, in response to affordability and housing supply pressures, the government announced it will lower annual permanent resident admissions from 500,000 to 395,000 in 2025, with further cuts projected, projected for 2026 and 2027. But the real change comes with the introduction of targets for temporary residents for the first time, which has accounted for the majority of the immigrant-led population boom in recent years. Canada has averaged 573,000 net arrivals per year over the past seven years, topping out at 1.2 million in 2023. Now, we always have to look at both sides of the coin though. Economists like BMO's Robert Kavsich believes this policy shift will have immediate effects on the rental market, particularly in high demand urban areas. With fewer newcomers, competition for rentals may ease, which could stabilize or even reduce rents in some regions. On the other hand, fewer immigrants could lead to labor shortages in sectors heavily reliant on newcomers like construction, potentially stalling new housing projects and impacting long-term economic growth. The labor force will grow at a slower pace, implying a tighter labor market than would otherwise be the case, but the labor force has been growing faster than employment over the past year.
Another significant factor in the market right now is the Bank of Canada's recent rate cut. The bank lowered its policy rate by 50 basis points to 3.75%. Their goal to keep inflation around the 2% target while supporting economic growth. Inflation has slowed substantially. It's now 1.6% as price pressures have eased in consumer goods, housing, and shelter costs. Well, not quite housing yet for Calgary residents. This drop in inflation gave the bank confidence to reduce rates, hoping to stimulate areas of the economy that are still sluggish. Lower rates generally make borrowing more affordable, which could increase demand in the housing market. However, Bank of Canada officials have emphasized that future rate cuts will depend on inflation and economic growth data as it comes in. I think we're going to see them. Quantitative tightening is also continuing, meaning that the bank is still cautious about stimulating the economy too quickly. This policy shift, along with the recent mortgage rule changes, might encourage more buyers to consider entering the market, but with rates still higher, some buyers may wait for further reductions. For homeowners with a variable rate mortgage, this rate cut will ease pressures on monthly payments. However, the bank remains cautious about the housing market's impact on inflation, given that housing activity can be very sensitive to interest rate changes. So here's where it gets interesting. Reducing immigration may relieve some short-term pressure on housing, but there's a risk that fewer newcomers could weaken Canada's labor force growth. That's especially concerning for sectors like construction and healthcare, where there are already labor shortages. This is why some economists argue that addressing housing supply issues with zoning and permitting reforms might be more effective than relying on immigration cuts alone. We also have to take into account here in Calgary, we're actually more likely to see people buy homes more quickly when they are coming from out of province versus out of country. A lot of our demand has been driven by interprovincial migration. Similarly, the Bank of Canada's rate cut is expected to ease some pressure on household budgets, which could help boost consumer confidence. But if housing demand spikes because of lower interest rates, there's a risk that prices and rents could climb again, making it harder to maintain stable inflation. The bank says they remain committed to controlling inflation, but are also looking for ways to support economic growth as Canada adjusts to these new immigration and housing policies. So what's the takeaway? If you're a buyer, the rate cut may make financing a little easier, though the impact might be more noticeable in the coming months as we see if additional rate reductions will happen. Again, I think they will. I wouldn't say we've really seen the effects of the rate cuts here in Calgary yet. I don't personally think lower immigration targets will lead to more balanced conditions right away. We still have pretty high demand right now. We could see the lower immigration targets affect the rental market more quickly, but the real impact will depend on how the market reacts to this increased supply here in Calgary. For sellers, especially in the higher price ranges, be prepared for a more balanced market as inventory continues to rise and buyers adjust to the new rate environment. If you're selling a lower price property, demand is still pretty strong, but as always, strategic pricing is key. Days on market are going up and the longer your home is on the market, the more likely you are to need a reduction. When the market is going crazy, we can kind of price into the upward trend. But when it's starting to balance out, you really need to price where the home is going to sell or even just slightly below because you don't want to be chasing the market down. Looking at the market so far for November, current sales plus our pending sales are keeping us pretty much in line so far with last year's numbers. However, so far we are seeing less new listings than we did last year. This could be that sellers are now thinking like it's better to hold off and sell in the new year versus trying to sell now as maybe buyers are in a holding pattern waiting for another rate drop. And this week our neighbors to the south have made their choice. How stupid. Donald Trump has been re-elected as president. Now, what does that mean for us? Well, 
there's a lot of uncertainty here. Will he follow through on those promised tariffs? And if so, how much will that impact our GDP? It's a big question mark, but one thing's for sure, Canada won't be immune to the ripple effects of this change. Time will tell and we'll be watching closely. So between immigration cuts, lower interest rates, and Calgary's changing market dynamics, there's a lot to keep an eye on. Canada is trying to balance immediate relief with long-term stability, and these new policies could shape our market for years to come. Now, what do you guys think? Are we going to see prices go up? go down, stay flat? Do we think this policy change on immigration will affect Calgary's housing market at all? If you found this video helpful, please like and subscribe. You can find my guides linked below. If you have any questions, feel free to reach out. Thanks for watching and I'll see you soon.